I'd like to call the plan commission meeting to order on Monday, October 17th, 2022. First item on the agenda is roll call, please. Commissioner Bodicher? Yes. Commissioner Williams? Here. Commissioner Knox? Here. Commissioner Weber? Here. Commissioner Bosco? Here. Commissioner Udell? Here. And Commissioner Markline? Here. All members present? Thank you. Second item on the agenda are the approval of minutes which pass under consent and thus seeing otherwise. So moved. Item number three, the approval of final plats and certified survey maps and easement releases. There is one this evening, certified survey map 22019-C, Rock Step, Janesville, LLC, one lot along Milton Avenue. Also passes under consent unless seeing otherwise. So moved. Item number four, set for public hearing. There are no items to set for public hearing this evening, which moves us to item number five, which is old business. The first item under old business is a public hearing conditional use permit to establish drive through facilities for a two tenant retail center, Starbucks and Lens Crafters at 2520 Milton Avenue. Brian Schweigel, senior planner. Uh, this request was submitted by Rockstep Janesville LLC, which is the owner of the uh, Uptown Janesville Mall property. The uh, building that we'll be discussing this evening is located in the northwest corner of the mall site near the intersection of Milton Avenue and Holiday Drive. In the uh, aerial photo on the screen currently, you can see the uh, development site and the building within it outlined in yellow. Uh, the building was most recently a Steinhoffel's mattress store and it was a blockbuster video prior to that. The proposed project would uh, divide the building into two tenant spaces, one of which would have drive-through facilities. The project is, or excuse me, the property is zoned B2 Community Shopping District, and conditional use review is required this evening due to the inclusion of the drive-through in the project plans. This is the site plan for the proposed project. Uh, it would be a 1.2 acre site as delineated by the certified survey map that the plan commission also reviewed uh, this evening. Um, that uh, site as described in our report associated with the CSM would be uh, carved off, or excuse me, separated from the uh, balance of the mall site. Um, the existing building on the property is about 5,500 square feet in size. And as I mentioned, it would be divided into two tenant spaces. Uh, Starbucks would occupy roughly 2,300 square feet. If I can get the mouse to work, that would be 2,300 square feet um, in the westerly portion of the building nearest Milton Avenue. And the balance of the property, balance of the building, roughly 3,200 square feet in the easterly portion would be occupied by uh, lens crafters. The Starbucks uh, drive through lane entrance, it's a little bit difficult to see here, but the drive through lane entrance would be here, adjacent to the southeast corner of the building. And you can see the drive through lane wrapping around the north side of the building, where the order and menu board would be located, before continuing on to the uh, west side of the building. And the pickup window, the drive through pickup window, is roughly in this location, again, along the west side of the building uh, facing the Milton Avenue frontage of the site. There would be a total of uh, 69 parking stalls uh, within the newly created lot. And uh, this would meet the minimum zoning ordinance requirements associated with the two land uses uh, as, as related to the uh, parking standards of the ordinance. Also included in the project plan are uh, new connections to the public sidewalk along Milton Avenue as well as a connection to the nearest Janesville Transit System bus stop located at the corner of Milton Avenue and Holiday Drive. Uh, the city's on-call traffic consultant completed a traffic impact analysis, or TIA, of the proposed project, including in that analysis traffic generation associated with the Woodman's Sports and Convention Center that's currently in discussion for the former Sears space at Uptown Janesville. The, rec the TIA uh, recommended several on-site modifications related to a separation of the drive through lane from the parking lot drive aisles on the property, uh, as well as uh, a few other changes. And these have been incorporated into the project plans uh, that you see on the screen before you. 
The TIA also recommended relocation of the existing Holiday Drive entrance to the site to align with the Burger King driveway to the north. And I'll jump back to the aerial photo and it's gonna be difficult to see here, but uh, across Holiday Drive to the north of the site is an existing uh, Burger King uh, drive-through restaurant. And they have a, a drive, driveway entrance roughly in this location on Holiday Drive. And so the recommendations of the TIA included shifting uh, this driveway access point eastward to align with that Burger King driveway. Uh, subsequently, the project plans, the site plan for this proposed project was, review, was revised to include a write-in only access uh, in this location. So that would permit uh, motorists traveling eastbound along Holiday Drive, so away from Milton Avenue, to make a write-in movement to enter the site, but it precludes uh, folks exiting the site, for example, or motorists who are westbound on Holiday Drive from making a left turn into uh, the site in that location. The other driveways, uh, the other existing driveways to the uptown Janesville site would remain in place and uh, unaffected by the proposed project, and so folks seeking to exit the property or uh, turn into the site from westbound Holiday Drive would be able to utilize those other driveway connections. Uh, the traffic consultant did prepare a supplementary memorandum uh, in favor of the proposed change with respect to the Holiday Drive uh, driveway to the site. Uh, and the traffic consultant is also in attendance this evening in the event that the commission has questions related to traffic or the TIA. Based upon the TIA's conclusions, staff have determined that the additional traffic generation associated with the proposed project can be safely accommodated by the public street network in the area. These uh, next two slides in the presentation depict uh, proposed exterior modifications to the building that would be completed as part of the project. And for comparative purposes, we've also included uh, photographs of the existing conditions on site. So um, on this slide, you can see kind of the existing conditions, the photo in the middle here. And so this, uh, this image is looking at the building from the southwest. Uh, this elevation on the left-hand side is the one that faces Milton Avenue. And then this elevation along the right uh, faces southward toward the parking lot uh, for the building. And so you can see up above here is how that south elevation would be modified as part of the proposed project. And down below you can see how the uh, front elevation, if you will, of the building, that's this shorter side, would be modified. And again, you can see in this location the drive-through uh, pickup window. Uh, this next image is uh, from the northeast uh, vantage point uh, along Holiday Drive. And so you can see this uh, north elevation facing Holiday Drive, and then the, uh, what would be the east elevation um, facing Dick's Sporting Goods. And so you can see up above here, this is the proposed elevation plan for that north side of the building facing Holiday Drive. And then on the lower portion of the screen is the shorter side of the building, again, facing Dick's Sporting Goods. Uh, it's important to note that the building predates the zoning ordinance architectural standards. In instances like this, uh, bringing the structure fully into conformance with the standards is not often feasible from a project cost perspective. So for example, a, a new building in this location uh, would likely have some additional exterior design elements to it. However, the developer, the designer, and city staff have worked to arrive at plans which we believe uh, move the property and the building specifically significantly toward meeting the intent of the architectural requirements uh, of the ordinance. Uh, I'd also note when we're looking at the elevation plans here that you can see the proposed uh, wall signage associated with the project and uh, as depicted the wall signage would meet the ordinance requirements. Uh, this next image is a photograph of the existing uh, ground sign on the Uptown Janesville property. Uh, so in addition to uh, wall signs on the larger mall building, uh, Uptown Janesville has this shared facility uh, located along Milton Avenue. 
Uh, this existing sign is larger than would otherwise be permitted, and that's by virtue of prior plan commission action to um, authorize that increase in size associated with the uh, J.C. Penney redevelopment project in 2014. The plans for this project under review this evening are consistent with this use of the shared sign, and they do not depict any additional ground signage um, on that portion of the site. The uh, plan commission must uh, authorize that building, the, so it would be the Starbucks and Lens Crafters uh, tenants, to be uh, represented on the shared sign since a recording of the certified survey map and again separation of that area from the balance of the mall property would uh, render such uh, signage and representation on the shared sign as off-premises and prohibited by the sign ordinance. Uh, so in addition to uh, recommending that the Plan Commission authorize such representation on the off-premises sign, staff also recommend that the Plan Commission incorporate a limitation on on-site ground signage uh, to that shared facility along Melton Avenue. Notice of this evening's uh, public hearing was sent as required and staff have not been contacted by the public regarding the proposed project. We believe that the criteria for conditional use approval can be met and we recommend that following a public hearing the Plan Commission authorize the off-premises signage as I mentioned and approve the conditional use permit subject to the conditions listed in our report. I'd be happy to take any questions. Thank you, Brian. Are there any questions of commission members before opening the public hearing? Commissioner Udell has a question. Yeah, I have a question. Where, where is it anticipated for delivery trucks? Because I see what the queuing zone, three, or three sides of the building there, where you anticipate those trucks parking for deliveries? Yeah, you know, and that is a good question. We do have the site designers in attendance this evening mm -hmm. who may be able to, to speak to that, what you're likely to see. Um, I can tell you that in terms of, you know, employee access and I suppose delivery access, um, there will be, it will make use of, and maybe if I jump back to the elevation plan, um, you can see that there will be kind of uh, these two doorway mm -hmm. entrances along the north elevation of the building. So I suppose uh, it's possible that someone in that scenario would park in maybe the you know unused portion of the mall parking field and then kind of bring things on this sidewalk that you see along the east side of the building and then in the north side of the building to enter those those doorways um, unless unless the store operators the store managers are amenable to those materials being brought in the main entrances on the south side Commissioner Udell, would you like us to have, before we open the public hearing, have nope. the developers or? We can do later. Okay, yeah. I just want to make sure. Are there any other questions? Commissioner Markline? I'm just curious, um, in the tra tra traffic study, there was talk about relocating onto Holiday Drive up by the Burger King, and we, we didn't see anything, and your presentation says that you had a meeting at the Mines and you came up at this right turn only entrance and I'm just wondering how realistic that's going to be for a westbound wanting to turn left coffee drinker in need of a fix if they're going to honor that. Yeah, well, perhaps I think that's it, a problem waiting to happen. Perhaps uh, we could have the, the city's on-call traffic consultant uh, yeah. speak to that question. I also have another question about that okay. as well. Sure, John, be your Brett's from Traffic Analysis and Design. Regarding this access point, uh, Yes, it is a right turn only, and this is preliminary. We're expecting the site designers to modify that right turn slightly um, for, to basically enhance that right turn. Also, there's, as shown in the site plan, if you look real closely, there's a lot of do not enter signs posted throughout. So it is heavily signed do not enter for left turning vehicles, but obviously we all know there will be one or two left turn vehicles that will make that movement. That is correct. However, it's the benefit of this being right in only, it is eliminates the left out movements, which is the problematic movement. In other words, turning left out to go westbound on holiday, that's the worst case or problematic movement. And the benefit is that eliminates that movement and pushes that further to the east, where it's much safer to make that maneuver because we have less queuing due to the signals at holiday in Milton. I'm hearing it was exiting was going um, west is the problem, but you're half expecting people coming westbound um, and 
to take a left turn into that, then you probably half expect that to happen. Even though it's heavily signed and designed for that not to happen, we all know there will be a few drivers that will do that. Uh, more than a few, so, in my opinion. Yeah. Um, I also have, as long as you're here, sure. um, from the Burger King with alignment into the ingress, well, I guess it would be an ingress driveway, um, is a frontage road. So, so now you've got potentially frontage road cutting across into the driveway of right turn only, correct? So, yeah, because you, you, you know where that frontage road is, right? Because it so, says do not, I just want to make sure. To the from, west, right. Yep. Yeah. Right. Okay. All right. That was my main concern. The other concern I have is is the queuing piece, but I don't that I don't believe is necessarily toddy. That's more of a design um, of the layout of the I'll call them the bumpers. For the of, drive through. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that's not you, correct? We did a sample analysis of that. Okay. I can tell you a story. We've done several studies for Starbucks over the years. Mm -hmm. During the, what we call the pre-COVID years, their design was to accommodate seven vehicles in the drive through queue. With COVID, that changed, obviously. Mm -hmm. So we did traffic counts on their Brookfield location on Blue Mound Road at Corporate Drive, one of their busier locations. During COVID in April of 2021, that dining room was closed, so only the drive through was open. And we had counts, queuing counts there and we had queues between nine to 12 vehicles. So looking at this site plan, this site plan can accommodate 14 vehicles in the drive-through. So again, we're looking at kind of a worst case condition on that Blue Mound Road site. Mm -hmm. So we're pretty comfortable that this site can definitely handle a worst case such as Blue Mound plus a little extra if needed. The only, the only reason I'm, I'm sure we're all asking is some of us were present for the existing Starbucks with <laughs> queuing. And um, that, that queues quite far out onto the road. So we just right. want to make sure that we're giving adequate um, 14 to 16 car queues. Sure, I understand. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone else before we open the public hearing? I don't see any. Thank you for now. Any more questions? All right, at this time, we'll open the public hearing. Anyone wishing to speak regarding the conditional use permit to establish drive through facilities for a two tenant retail center, Starbucks and Lens Crafters? at 2520 Milton Avenue. If you'd like to go to the, either one of the podiums and if you would please state your name and address for the record, we would appreciate it. I would ask the Starbucks individuals, if you could, to go to the, one of the podiums and address Commissioner Udell's question about util, uh, delivery. Good evening, I'm Ryan Cohn from Combs & Associates and I'm here on behalf of Rockstep. Um, yeah, as far as your question goes, I believe they're planning for uh, deliveries during closing times. And I think they were going to utilize the drive through lane for that. Um, but I, there is plenty of parking out front there that if they did have to wheel through the front door, that shouldn't be an issue either. Um, I want to address the right turn in as well. This actually is shaped very similar to the Craig High School one off of Racine Street now. Uh, so that would be a very tough left turn to get into it. Uh, I don't think we have a lot of cars turning left off Racine Street into that Craig High School uh, lane between the Italian house and the bar. So it's very similar. In fact, we checked it out. The angle's almost identical to that one. So that should eliminate, you know, a lot of cars trying to come in that direction. Um, if you guys have any further questions, I am more than happy to answer them. Are there any questions? Do you have any questions? Are you the only one that's going to talk with us tonight? Or is somebody yes. from... No, so I'm just going to say, are your clients um, amenable to the uh, site plan review dated uh, October 13th, 2022? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Anyone else wishing to speak regarding the conditional use permit to establish drive through facilities at a two tenant retail center, Starbucks and Lens Crafters at 2520 Milton Avenue? Anyone else wishing to speak? Anyone else wishing to speak regarding the conditional use permit at 2520 Milton Avenue? Seeing none, the public hearing is closed. Commissioner Botcher and then Commissioner Knox. I'll make a motion if that's okay. I move to authorize the subject property's commercial tenant to be represented on the shared, oh wait, is that the whole motion? Skip, I guess. 
The shared uptown Jamesville ground site located along Milton Avenue, I move to find that the proposed development is compliant with the standards for conditional use approval as prescribed by the Jamesville zoning ordinance and approve a conditional use permit to establish drive-through facilities for a two-tenant retail center at 2520 Milton Avenue, subject to the conditions listed in the planning division memorandum dated October 17, 2022. Okay, there's a motion by Commissioner Bodisher, second by Commissioner I'll second Brown. both of those motions, Eddie. Okay. Even the one I stuttered on. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Commissioner Bodisher, you have the floor. Anything further? I, I think we would probably be killed if we didn't approve this, knowing how bad our Starbucks is <laughs> now. <laughs> no, it's a great, obviously it's the right right area. It's it's the perfect redevelopment for that for that building. So it's great to see. I just want to give my thanks to the planning staff and for putting this packet together. It was extremely thorough. So thank you. It made our job much easier. Great. Are there any other questions? If not, I just I still have concerns about that right in only. Um, Hopefully the traffic uh, engineer is right on that, but we also have a lot of signs out there that say don't block the frontage road. And <laughs> I, I saw you said about 86% of the people didn't do that, but I think about 86% of the people do do that. Um, I just have concerns on it, but I'll be voting for it and we'll see how it works. Yeah, and I think one of the things to think uh, is that I'm having worked with Toddy before that if there are some issues that we see with the with the track record that we have other Starbucks to look at we can certainly reevaluate it I think that's the the point is 14 to 16 maybe maybe 20 to 27 we'll have to see but we're flexible <laughs> we're flexible I'm not worried about the queues I'm worried about the people going westbound right. and oh sure left. sure I think at that because they yeah. see a Starbucks and they're just <laughs> <laughs> there you go all right, well, if there aren't any other questions, there's a motion by Commissioner Bodisher, second by Commissioner Knox, and I would ask that we please vote. Is everyone connected? I am, but I'm not, I am, but I'm not getting anything up. How are you doing, Brian? We have three votes thus far showing oh, up yeah. in the system. Paul and I don't have. Steve doesn't, Steve doesn't, and okay, you're not so on, Okay, so let's right, voice vote. Yeah. Let's voice vote. Okay. Doing the first motion first, obviously. Okay. Would you like me to read through the roll? Sure. Please. Commissioner Bonnicher. Yes. Commissioner Williams. Yes. Commissioner Knox. Yes. Commissioner Weber. Yes. Commissioner Bosco. Yes. Commissioner Udell. Yes. And Commissioner Markline. Yes. The uh, motion is unanimously approved. And just a point of clarification, because Commissioner Knox wanted to make sure that we voted on both motions. Is that correct, Commissioner Knox? C correct. Yeah. And that was for both, correct? Yes. Okay. That was the motion that was made, yes. Yep. Okay. Awesome. Thanks. Thank you. Okay. So that motion passed. Good luck with your project. Moving on to the item, second item under old business. Uh, the first is a public hearing rezoning of property located at 314 West Milwaukee Street. Midwest Indoor Storage from B5 to B6. And I'm also going to read the second, or excuse me, that would technically be the third public hearing, which is a condi conditional use permit to operate a warehouse establishment, Midwest Indoor Storage at 314 West Milwaukee Street. Um, asking to combine both of the, pro of the discussions, but it would be a separate vote. Um, so Trey, welcome. Uh, good evening, uh, Trey Meyer, Associate Planner. Uh, so on the agenda this evening, we have two requests uh, related to the establishment of Midwest Indoor Storage at 314 West Milwaukee Street, uh, both a rezoning and a subsequent conditional use request. Both requests were submitted by the current property owner, KKNG Properties, LLC. The subject property is outlined in yellow on your screen. It's located at the corner of North High Street and West Milwaukee Street. Uh, the request is to rezone the property from B5 to B6. The rezoning of the site is necessary for the project to be eligible for a conditional use permit to establish an indoor storage facility at this location. The site adjoins the B6 district to the north and west and the B5 district to the south and east. Historically, this site was used as a furniture store, formerly known as Crazy Joe's Furniture. Uh, the building was originally constructed in 1955 and an addition was completed in 1973. 
So what you're looking at here is the site plan that was submitted for the proposal. Uh, the site plan proposes to maintain the existing infrastructure around the site, uh, as well as the existing parking facilities that are currently behind the building. There will be a new handicap accessible ramp that will be installed from the parking lot into the building. And the site has existing trees and planting beds along the West Milwaukee Street frontage from the reconstruction of that road. As noted in the site plan review letter, uh, meeting green space requirements for B6, which is 5% of the lot area, uh, would be unnecessarily difficult for the site. So staff has recommended for some additional green space and trees to be located near the parking lot to mitigate that. So what you see here is on the site plan, we've taken the two parking spots closest to North High Street and replaced them with green space um, to be planted with trees. The floor plans that have been submitted depict a number of storage units of varying sizes that will be located throughout the two floors of the building. There is also an office space proposed for Midwest indoor storage employees, as well as two commercial tenant spaces that will face the West Milwaukee Street frontage. These tenant spaces are approximately 1,250 square feet in size. So if you look towards the bottom of that floor plan, you'll see those two commercial tenant spaces. Just to the left of that would be the uh, office space for the Midwest indoor storage employees. And this is the first floor, the ground floor. And then this would be the second floor with varying storage unit sizes. The elevation plans depict significant changes that are proposed for the exterior of the building. A distinct change in the brick color to emphasize the existence of three separate storefronts, which will be better seen in our next slide when we look at the color renderings. There are also several architectural details that are typical of the downtown historic area that are proposed principally these are along West Milwaukee Street and these include the, addi the addition of windows along West Milwaukee Street as well as second story windows along West Milwaukee Street and around the corner on High Street, a cornice to be extended along the roof line, a wooden header board running along the building's midsection with sign plates and pillars to separate tenant spaces, large store windows that face West Milwaukee Street, <laughs> acrylic awnings, as well as two recessed entries uh, for the building along the West Milwaukee Street frontage. The elevation plan also depicts signage that is proposed along both West Milwaukee Street and North High Street, and additional exterior lighting will be located near exits and in the parking lot area. So these next four slides <clears throat> show existing photos uh, as well as side-by-side -side, uh, color renderings that were submitted for this proposal. Uh, we note the significant change in the exterior appearance of the building, particularly along the West Milwaukee Street frontage. With a spur of redevelopment happening in close vicinity to the site, this proposal works to complement those developments. This project proposes a significant investment in the downtown area and provides residents, business owners, and community groups with a much needed service. So what we're looking at here is the south elevation. Uh, this would be the elevation that faces West Milwaukee Street. This would be the west elevation, so this is the elevation that would face North High Street. This would be the east elevation, this is the elevation that faces the public parking lot. And then lastly, this is the north elevation, this is the rear of the building uh, where their private parking facilities are located. Staff believes that this proposal demonstrates that it is compliant with the standards for conditional use approval. The nature of the proposed project is such that the criterion is met. The nature of the proposed use for self-storage is not likely to negatively impact neighboring property. <clears throat> Furthermore, staff believe the proposal will positively affect neighboring business operations through the establishment of a new and complementary service offering which is likely to support the creation of additional dwelling units as well as storage opportunities for other businesses in the area. The proposed project incorporates significant improvements to the building's exterior, maintains a retail presence along West Milwaukee Street, and shows compatibility with other redevelopment and reuse of downtown property. Staff finds that the proposed development is compliant with the standards for conditional use approval as prescribed by the Janesville Zoning Ordinance, subject to the, subject to the conditions as stated in the staff report. And with that, I will turn it over to Duane, who will present on the rezoning aspect of this proposal. Thank you. Uh, yes, thank you, Trey. And as indicated, there are two public hearings scheduled this evening, both of which require action on uh, the proposal to redevelop the, the former furniture store at 314. 
<clears throat> West Milwaukee Street. Uh, at this time, we'll, we'll address issues related to the rezoning of the property. And uh, as presented, rezoning of the property is necessary to facilitate this adaptive reuse <clears throat> in order to uh, uh, redevelop the property for indoor storage using climate controlled um, <clears throat> applications in, in that particular location. As mentioned, the site is zone B5. The B5 district is the city's central business district. Uh, warehousing and storage establishments are not listed as either a permitted or conditional use in the B5 district. Therefore, rezoning of the site from B5 to B6 uh, is required in order to make it eligible for conditional use permit consideration. Uh, the two-story building located on the subject property sits at the corner of High and West Milwaukee Street. The site itself is uh, roughly seven-tenths or just over 30,000 square feet in area. It appears that the original construction of the building in 1955 has, has been used exclusively for uh, furniture storage and sale purposes dating back to that time of original uh, construction with the addition being constructed in 1973 uh, onto the western portion of the, uh, of the property. The property, uh, prior to the applicant's purchase of the property, it was uh, on the market for at least uh, two years. And um, although the, uh, the real estate broker who had it listed was here earlier tonight and submitted a written comment, um, there was very little interest expressed in reuse of the property for customary retail purposes uh, in the downtown district. Um, I think generally speaking, we would attribute that to the uh, rather unique construction type or characteristics, the design, the overall size of the building. Uh, at nearly 43,000 square feet in total area, uh, that's uh, a large space to fill as compared to other downtown businesses. Um, with the, uh, the redevelopment proposal, the majority of the building will be repurposed for climate controlled indoor storage. However, there will be two uh, separate retail tenant spaces as well as a separate office space established. And that office space will be used for the operational purposes of Midwest storage's uh, activities. The exterior design, as uh, Trey has mentioned, is intended to reflect a series of multiple storefronts that you would generally observe along a typical block in the downtown district. Uh, based on that design and as part of this rezoning and redevelopment request, staff feels that those uh, exterior improvements which are proposed for the building positively contribute to the overall character and aesthetic uh, not only along the West Milwaukee Street uh, corridor itself, but uh, the district also. In anticipation of this redevelopment proposal, uh, the property owner and applicant held a public uh, or held an informational meeting that occurred back uh, on August 24th. The meeting was very well attended. Uh, the, the proposal was thoroughly addressed. There were several questions asked and uh, a lot of information provided. In terms of uh, overall zoning compatibility, uh, the site is located at the edge, the westerly edge in particular of the community's uh, B5 Central Business District. The primary distinction between B5 and the B6 District is that the B5 District encompasses the downtown core area, while the B6 District is on the outer edges of the core, and it includes a wider range of uses, activities that tend to complement those activities located directly in the core. In this case, reuse of the property under its current B5 zoning uh, designation has proven to be particularly challenging uh, to repurpose uh, given the, the site's characteristics. We believe that the redevelopment proposal in conjunction with this uh, <clears throat> uh, rezoning request is uh, going to result in uh, in allowing for an adaptive commercial reuse of the building that will provide substantial reinvestment, improvement to the existing building, reconstruction of the front elevation facing West Milwaukee, as well as a portion of the North High Street uh, frontage with uh, historical architectural treatments, 
the, uh, the pedestrian, pedestrian scale retail service activities will be maintained with the tenant spaces in conjunction with this conversion. And uh, the result will uh, provide the establishment of a new land use activity that offers downtown residents, businesses, service organizations, and others with a new climate controlled storage use. And for those reasons, staff is uh, supporting the rezoning requests in this case. Um, and finally, uh, there were several written comments that, uh, that were furnished, um, copies of which, hard copies, have been provided to the Plan Commission this evening. Some of those you would have received by email. Some came in uh, just prior to the meeting. In total, I believe we have nine written requests that were submitted. Um, those requests include uh, letters of, of support from Forward Janesville, Forward Foundation, downtown business owners, downtown property owners, um, and then I think two other comments that uh, raise questions, which I'm happy to address. One in particular brought forward a, a question regarding is there a minimum square foot requirement that needs to be maintained uh, in the building for retail purposes in either the B5 or B6 district? And the answer to that question is no. The only restriction for maintaining a minimum amount of retail square foot area uh, occurs in an instance where a building is proposed for, uh, for first floor residential occupancy purposes, upon which the ordinance requires that 25% of that ground floor space immediately adjoining uh, either uh, Main Street or Milwaukee Street needs to be maintained under a conditional use permit review by the commission. And that was uh, part of an ordinance, a zoning ordinance change to the B5 district that uh, was brought before the commission and then adopted by the council three years ago in, in 2019. Um, there are no other minimum square foot uh, requirements that, uh, that exist within the code. Um, I think there were some other questions uh, uh, about uh, windows, but I guess I'll allow the commission to ask those uh, as you, you desire as we move into discussion and public hearing purposes. So with that, I'm happy to answer any questions or staff is happy to, any, happy to answer any questions related to either the conditional use or the rezoning at this time. Okay. Um, Commissioner Bodisher has a question followed by Commissioner Markline. Is there anyone else right now at that queue? Okay. Yeah. Commissioner Bodisher, go ahead. Uh, so the proposal with the, oh, that's right. We got mics. <laughs> the proposal with the, with the retail space, is that something that we suggested or required, or is that something that the applicant has um, voluntarily put on the plan? <clears throat> and if we did approve this the way it is, would there, if down the line they said, you know, we're not getting any retail clients, would they have the ability then to adapt that and put more storage units in? Sure, good questions. Uh, the answer to the first part was uh, s staff felt that in order for um, the adaptive reuse of the building to allow indoor storage to occur in conjunction with the rezoning, that maintaining <clears throat> some semblance of the typical downtown pedestrian retail service, uh, uh, I guess, corridor um, environment must include a, uh, a retail component rather than a full conversion of the building to uh, offer storage exclusively. And so when, when we looked at making suggestions, recommendations for what that space should consist of, we looked at what the average or typical retail uh, storefront space would be elsewhere in the downtown district. And that's generally around 1,200 square feet. In this case, they are providing two retail spaces of 1,250 square feet a piece with uh, kind of built-in design flexibility to expand that, double the size essentially for one tenant if that were um, desired. So staff has, has worked with the applicant for, I think, a year and a half or so uh, to um, refine plans to provide improvements, uh, a floor plan layout, tenant spaces, their office space, changes to the exterior of the building um, that 
I, I think are generally supported by downtown businesses, by downtown stakeholders, by downtown revitalization supporters, as well as city staff with what um, has been prepared to this point. And I think I forgot your second the question. The second was if, if, you know, two years from now, sure. that, you know, those it, spaces are there and they're, they're sitting yeah. and they're full, you know, in terms for sto storage, could they adapt the building? Uh, they could, but they would need to come before you for that approval because staff's recommendation um, um, it, number four in particular requires that those tenant spaces be maintained in their configuration um, and actually a prohibition to conversion to storage is, is included so that we, we build in that assurance that, that that retail presence will be maintained. Okay. So they could come before uh, the commission by way of requesting an amendment to change okay. that, but that's what we're recommending. Okay, that's all I need. Thanks, I appreciate that. Commissioner Markline? Yeah, thank you. Are there any B6 zoning issues that are not compatible um, with the downtown? If we open up the door to allow this B6, because we know what's going to be storage units, but is there any other use in B6 that would not be desirable downtown? Yeah, they, when you look at the list of permitted uses uh, between B5 and B6, B6 is certainly more permissive. B6 would allow for auto sales, uh, recreational vehicle sales, um, I think auto repair, in fact, um, as well as uh, parking lots and, and then certainly storage of, of uh, outdoor storage in terms of parking lots for those, those vehicle sales. So, you know, those are the, the principal differences between the two. There are many other uses that are the same. Um, conditional uses are, are fairly similar, and as you know, conditional uses come before the, the plan commission. But I think when we look at the property, um, you look at the existing building, they would not, that property would not generally lend itself to those types of activities. And I think that's been demonstrated by the uh, significant lack of interest in any other land use activity uh, on the site while it had been, you know, on the market for the last two years. But those are the principal differences between the two. Now, um, if we go forward and, and support the B6 zoning for this one, there's a few other large semi-vacant or could be vacant buildings in the downtown area. If they came forward and asked for a B6 uh, for a storage, how um, willing will the city be on continuing doing something like this downtown? Sure, the, um, there are several buildings in, in the downtown central business district that may perhaps be similar to this. I think the, distinct, the distinction in this case with this property um, is its location. It's, it's, it's at the westerly edge, the limit. It's, it's not located within the core, in other words, a block, two blocks further east um, within the B5 district where if a request to uh, uh, rezone a property, which again would be necessary if it's in that B5 central business district, um, it would have to be rezoned and then would have to come before the, the plan commission for a conditional use. Our support to recommend the zoning change as well as the conditional use here in this case is, is, is because it's on the edge. Um, just over a year ago, the, the plan commission and the city council adopted a similar request to rezone property immediately uh, behind, or in other words, to the north of this property because that was on the edge as well the outer edge. Um, and I think that's a significant uh, distinction here with this property. If there are other locations elsewhere in the district, not on the edge, I don't see how we would, we would want to recommend a change to that effect because that is um, so far um, running contrary to the intent of the district. Now you sort of answered this, but I'm gonna ask it just in light of historical. Recently, the Plan Commission has turned down two re reuse properties. One was Menards, one was Shopco. And the thinking, at least my thinking on the Plan Commission was, why don't we wait 
for a higher and better use for this property. And in both situations, it came to fruition. We have a higher and better use and our city is better for it. So why is this the right plan for this one or should we wait for a higher and better use? Sure, I, again, I, I think when you compare the, uh, the applicant's request, the type of storage proposed, meaning it's, uh, I guess what I would call more of a, uh, a niche sort of storage that lends itself to downtown residents, to downtown businesses, other businesses elsewhere in the city, service organizations. It's small scale storage. It's climate controlled storage uh, of which there's very little, if any, uh, existing in, in the city that I'm aware of. And um, they've you know, they put together a proposal that doesn't convert the building in its entirety. Um, it, it's the majority of the building, but we're dealing with a building that's been particularly challenging to, uh, to redevelop because of how it was constructed. It was constructed for furniture storage, sales, um, and activities. And with two floors, for, for the past couple of years, staff uh, in planning and the economic development department have worked with the former owner, with the, the realtor involved to try and explore opportunities to reuse this site. And with the exception of a, um, um, a limited glance at looking at an indoor swimming pool facility, nothing else but storage kept coming back to this use. and. Um, in this particular case, for, I think for those reasons, it's, it's small scale, it's climate controlled, it fits in with the, uh, the retail component and significantly upgrades the property in a manner that's con generally consistent with the, the historic downtown district. Those are the distinctions between, um, I think, the two prior uh, storage uses, which were um, on different sites with different uh, um, circumstances affecting them. Okay. Now, my next question was this this uh, planning commission, not maybe not all the members here, um, we had a significant discussion with a, uh, a recent development in that area about putting windows on high, on high street or on the side streets. And I understand why we wouldn't be putting windows on the uh, what I call the north side, because there could be a building there. But on High Street, <clears throat> there are no windows on that side. It's a blank wall. And so my question is, we, we had a significant discussion on window and window placement for this previous use. And now we don't, we're not talking about that here. And also on windows, it, it sort of, if you want to be thinking on it, is it looks like they ran out of money to put the windows on the western half or the southern half of the building. We have it on the front elevation over the center thing and over the two retail, but the other part doesn't have any windows and it may be aesthetics. I don't know, but I'm just, we were asked on it on one of our letters and it, it does, when it's pointed out, I re, we remember the cause and the person that's talking about it was the person that was involved with this big discussion about putting windows in their building. So trying to be consistent downtown. So would you like me to respond to that or was that a statement? That was a question. Okay, thanks. The, yeah, and, and those are great questions. Um, I'll answer it in, in two different ways. Uh, the, uh, the practical application here of the code uh, as it relates to this conditional uh, use permit review and rezoning uh, to re rehabilitate, redevelop uh, an existing structure as opposed to uh, reconstruct or new construction of a multi-tenant commercial building in the, in the B6 uh, district uh, falls into uh, or is subjected to a different section of the zoning ordinance. We have a section of the zoning code that is uh, entitled physical development standards that pertain to the construction to uh, construction of new commercial buildings um, anywhere in the, in the city, including downtown in the V6 district. So that project uh, 
was uh, was was subject to those physical development standards, which include exterior uh, improvements, architectural components, materials, and in, as part of that review, uh, the code specifically uh, applies to addressing those particular factors. In this case, we have. Uh, an existing building that's been uh, you know, on the site since at least 1955 is fairly nondescript. <clears throat> it was constructed for the longstanding furniture uh, uh, store purpose that, um, that had existed. And so when we look at the, and, and I have the presentation slide up here, at the West Milwaukee Street elevation, what you see is uh, an extension of the, the ground floor windows across the frontage of the building, uh, in particular in the area of uh, the storage units, Midwest storage. The second story uh, windows that you see on, I guess you'd, you would call it the easterly half or two thirds of the building, um, are intended to uh, complement uh, what the design proposes in, in taking an existing structure that's uniform across its frontage and breaking it up to appear as though there are a multiple set of independent storefronts. Uh, and, and I think we've, we've accomplished that. So the second story windows do that. They're above the, the ground floor, which is customarily what you see in, in many buildings in the downtown district. But as you go west, and you look at the storage units, you can see the, the distinction in the, the color, the materials, the, f the, the features. Um, at one point in time, we had second story windows extended across uh, the entire frontage. It didn't look right. It didn't mesh with um, a, a kind of exacting the, the appearance, the combination of materials that we see in other buildings. We want to draw distinction uh, in, in the exterior changes here to, uh, to result in a look, an appearance, a feel as though that we have multiple buildings along that frontage. So those windows, uh, while they were originally proposed, were removed to accomplish, I think, that aesthetic uh, uh, outcome. In terms of, if I can get this to, yeah, there we go. In terms of the high street frontage, you're correct. The windows are not extended along that frontage. What we looked at was uh, the corner and uh, buildings that are located on corners, particularly in the downtown, have, have you know, significance. They're uh, served on two sides. In this case, if you look at the other four, four corners, you have the Monterey Hotel across the street, the former YMCA to the west, and a recently redeveloped property uh, to the, I guess it would be the, you know, the, the southwest. Um, <clears throat> the building to the southwest doesn't have windows on that side either and just went under a, um, a fairly extensive uh, remodel with, I think, four residential units, if I'm not correct, above and commercial reuse that's uh, uh, intended on the ground floor. But treating the corner with uh, wrapping those elements around with a window, and again, these are real windows cut into the wall uh, along the, uh, the ground floor elevations with the pilasters, with the um, uh, sign boards and the signage and the cornice um, is what we believe fulfilled the, the intent of um, um, providing an upgrade that was consistent with the, the historic uh, look and feel. Um, to extend the windows all the way uh, across was discussed, ultimately was determined to be not feasible for the project. And with, with all projects, we have to evaluate the proposal under the standards for conditional use review. And I believe staff's um, um, ability to require that would have been uh, extensive to, to require that degree, that level of modification to an existing building under the review process that we have. Thank you. Uh, my next question is, we have two retail on here. We have an entrance into the storage, and then in that west corner, we have more storage. Was there ever any thought giving, or what was the rationale behind not having a third retail for the corner unit? I think I'd let the, uh, the applicant answer that one when they have an opportunity to speak. Good, then we'll leave it at that. 
and my next one might also be into that it's more of a not a statement but I know we're worried about downtown parking and they do have a parking lot in the back and um, when we talk um, I don't know if this is a 24 7 operation if we're expecting to be able to use 18 or so parking stalls around the clock or if there's a possibility the city would allow them to turn that into lease parking uh, for some residents or people that need parking in the evening hours to take the pressure off the streets. Thank you. That's all I have. Is there anyone else wishing to speak before we open the public hearing? No? Okay. All right. Just a reminder, we are going to be ending up voting on these items separately. Um, I'll ask the commission, uh, would you like to have the public hearing, have the uh, applicants and people speak on both the conditional use for the building, the use, as well as the rezoning simultaneously, or would you prefer to have just the rezoning? Just together. Together? <coughs> together. Cool. Okay. At this time, I will open up the public hearing. Um, and so, again, the public hearing will be on the items of old business. The first would be the public hearing rezoning of property located at 314 West Milwaukee Street, Midwest Indo Indoor Storage from B5 to B6, and also the public hearing conditional use permit to operate a warehouse establishment, Midwest Indoor Storage at 314 West Milwaukee. And if you could just go to the podium and then state your name and address for the record, that would be great. Hello, Todd, Todd Kimball, uh, 625 Sussex Drive. Um, I've been involved in downtown Janes for the past uh, 45 years or so, and as everybody knows, any successful downtown needs to have nice apartments to live in, and that's been our problem for the last, you know, 50 years. And with anybody living in an apartment, they need to have places to store their summer and winter gear, and with all the, you know, with the River Flats apartments, um, they do have some storage, but with all the new apartments that are going with the Monterey apartments across the street, um, I think it'd be very beneficial to all the tenants living downtown in apartment buildings to be able to bring their kayaks and their bikes into a wheel up a ramp and put it into a storage instead of trying to drag them up a stairway and store them in their apartments. And I think that the facade on the building is like, the best I've seen, uh, I, I go to self storage conventions and I'm, I'm, you know, we have self storage facility. I shouldn't be promoting more storage facilities in town, but <laughs> there is a, a need for it downtown. And this building has needed a facade like this for 45 years. And for someone to come into town, an out of town company to come in and do this to this. And I think it's great that we did wait on the Shopco Plaza and waiting on that. But for a building that's designed like this, it's basically designed to have um, temperature control. I know everybody uses climate controlled storage, but no one in this room can control climate. Um, but I think that with the with the Midwest section of it, I think if they keep the, the smoke glass like they do, so when you're driving down, like a lot of the public storage um, facilities like this, they'll have clear glass so you can see all the or orange roll-up doors. I think having the smoke glass so you can't see in that Midwest, I think that is a would be a good requirement to keep that so you don't drive by and see a bunch of roll-up doors. And then having the, the retail space on there, I think that they won't have any problem you know, finding tenants for a brand new, you know, fresh looking building and having the windows up top um, on the right side of the building. It, you know, it does definitely look like there's three separate buildings and now there's this, you know, one big, you know, brick building there. And I think with having the, this down there, it will make it easier for people to rent the new apartments that are coming into downtown um, to say, hey, we got self storage right across the street and you don't have to. You know, and we, you know, I'd, I'd like them to come down and rent from us, but we don't have um, temperature controlled storage, which there's none in town. And to be able to walk across the street and store their their personal belongings and their, their outdoor gear, I think would be a huge improvement for the whole area. I mean, that whole end of the block is, is finally changing. And this is 
I don't think it's a, something we want to wait for another um, potential client that could do something better with it. Because I think this is, this is the best use for this building for downtown Janesville. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else wishes to speak? Hello, my name is Nicole Elsawoff. I'm with Midwest Indoor Storage and KKG Properties. Um, I just wanted to introduce myself. Um, Samantha Zaraka is here as well. She's our Director of Real Estate Development. So um, I just wanted to give you a little bit of background on who I am. I won't take too much time, but um, so me and my father, uh, Kyle Kruger, we own Midwest Indoor Storage. We're 50 50 partners. Um, and we own facilities in southern Minnesota, um, Iowa, and, um, well, hopefully storage in Janesville, Wisconsin soon. But um, we have 11 or 10 different properties. This will be our 11th. Um, and all of them are climate controlled. And that climate controlled for us means um, we control the temperature, but we also control humidity. Um, so we have specialized HVACs that we, we put on our buildings. Um, and so we can maintain humidity levels during the entire year. Um, and we buy typically vacant, um, distressed properties, properties that are hard to develop. Um, we kind of like the challenge. Um, the other big thing is a lot of the communities really rally around us. We really like coming in and taking something that's kind of been an eyesore and having people, you know, come rent from us and say, oh my gosh, this place is amazing. You know, thank you so much for you know, whatever changes you've done, it's just, it's really rewarding, not only for us, but for our on-site managers. Um, so we target small to mid-sized town. I grew up in a very small town. I'm not a big city girl. So um, we like, we kind of like that feel. Um, there's a lot more care for local businesses, it feels like. And um, so this is a, a, this is on the larger side of a market for us, but um, we do have a couple facilities in a little larger markets, but we tend to um, somewhere anywhere from 6,000 to 60,000 um, people is kind of our market range. Um, uh, we've done bowling alleys, lumber yards. Um, we find vacant bowling alleys quite often. Um, it's sad. I like, enjoy bowling, but, um, you know, it's just a different generation. So um, a lot of times we like to be located where the people are, where apartments are, because, yes, we're a convenience factor. You know, they want to store their you know, Christmas stuff, and they don't want to have it in their apartments because apartments are getting smaller, and people are living in higher density areas, and so we like to be there, near there. Um, this building was, was ideal for us. Um, the square footage, we need some sort of volume to be able to justify it. Um, there was definitely some, um, and I'll kind of go into some of the questions here, there was... Um, this, the access to this building is really difficult. So most of the building is about four feet underground, um, which you don't really realize until you go in and you start looking around. But we wanted to put more retail on the front portion of the building. But when we had our architects start laying things out, um, the corner underneath where it says Midwest Indoor Storage is actually about three to four feet underground. And so you'd have to put ramping in. Um, and we laid out the ramps. They almost were towards the back of the building by the time you could actually, you know, slowly get someone in. Um, so it was really difficult to get a retail tenant in that corner specifically. Um, and so we had talked with um, Dwayne and Brian, gosh, over the last year and a half. But um, I was like, I don't know how we would even be able to rent this space. It's going to take so much ramping to be able to get people in. Um, the back of the building... Um, there's a loading dock, but the man door that you walk into, you have to immediately walk downstairs or upstairs. You're coming in at like a mid-level, um, also four feet under. So it has a lot of those access point issues, which I can see a developer coming in and being like, I don't know how I'm going to get customers in, right? Um, and so it's we would like more access points ideally for our property, but we're dealing with the existing building and kind of the infrastructure as well. Um, the other issue with this building is we have to do major upgrades to the power. Um, there's only about a hundred and well, there's just not enough power to the building to run air conditioning. So the building's never been air conditioned. Um, and so we're having to put a big infrastructure in there. there there's quite a few things that we in, we enjoy as developers to find creative solutions around, but I can see where why this building has sat for a long time um, besides its size. But um, 
just to tell you a little bit more about the operations, because I know we didn't, you know, there were some questions about hours and things. Um, so all of our facilities close overnight. Um, we open at 5 a.m. and we close at 10.30. Uh, just keeps everyone safe. Um, you know, less, there's just less issues, right? Um, all of our mo lights are on motion sensors. So if our lights turn on in the middle of the night, it's very easy for our manager in the morning to identify that someone's in there after hours, let's address this. Um, and then um, we do all new HVACs. We put energy efficient lighting in. Um, we try to take any green measures that we can to um, you know, just do our best to um, put our best foot forward. Um, we have security cameras around the entire property. So this one will have somewhere between 50 and 70 cameras based on the square footage. Um, so it'll actually become a much safer building because there'll be cameras on the outside and the inside. Um, there will be an on-site manager, um, either it'll be five days a week until we get close to being full. And then, um, we normally like to add in a Saturday shift. It'll just, every city's a little bit different. So, but normally five days a week, we have an on-site manager. We actually hired the manager of the furniture store. His name's Jose and he's been fantastic. We actually hoped we would be open by now. So he started about three weeks ago <laughs> training in our corporate office in Rochester, Minnesota. So He's working remote and really hoping to get his store open soon. <laughs> um, what else? I, um, yep, we have keypads, so we know who's coming and going. Every tenant gets their own code once you can sign up online. Um, and it takes about 10 minutes to go through the rental process. We get all of your information. It issues you a code. You'll be able to come in during um, building access hours but we know who's coming and going if there's ever an issue um, we can kind of nip that in the butt really quickly um, we do have um, at some one of our facilities we have a moving truck that we use not for um, it's for tenants that move in it's kind of a promotion more they get it for free when they're moving in um, and it helps to rent our units also there's been a lot of issues with um, people getting trucks lately. There's just been a, a, just a huge shortage. So we implemented that at one of our facilities, which has been going really well. They're not like semi trucks. They're um, like 16 feet or something. They're manageable for people to actually drive. Um, and so we would ask for permission. We don't have a truck right now, but maybe in the future, if there is still the shortage, we would like to be able to park one of our moving trucks outside. Um, we don't do any leasing. Um, we're not in any of that business and we don't ever plan to be. <laughs> um, so we would ask for that. Um, that was one thing. Um, uh, the other request um, that we have is to look at the green space. Um, there was a little shifting at the end. We didn't realize was part of it. Um, we just like to keep the green space the same amount of square footage, but move it just a little bit um, to accommodate some of the utility things that were coming in. And we might have to put another freight lift on this property um, if the current one isn't sufficient, which we're still working through. Um, so, but I'm, we're hoping to be able to just work with um, Duane and Brian to kind of change that just a little bit in configuration. Um, yeah, so I, again, I don't want to talk too long. I just want to introduce myself. Um, the community has been amazing to work through. Um, it's, been, it's been really inspiring. You guys are very lucky that you have, um, you know, these community involvement and like, a lot of groups that care about what this looks like and so we're we're members of forward Janesville now and so that's been really really refreshing to just see people so involved in their community so we're happy we're happy to be a part of it and happy to be a part of it as Midwest Indoor Storage so thank, thank you. you I know there are uh, questions by Com Commissioner Knox really wants to ask questions. Uh, <laughs> so. just yeah. two quick questions yeah. um, of your current Ten properties. What's the average square footage? And then, second of those ten, is there anything in the downtown space like you're proposing right here? That's a great question. Um, so this is about the average size. So we have facilities from 130,000 square feet down to 6,000 square feet. Um, so this is kind of right in the middle of what we're looking at um, typically. Um, we're working on one in Faribault right now that is fairly consistent with this. Um, <laughs> I've kind of joked about with uh, Samantha is uh, we started both those projects about the same time and we're about at the same point. It's just we've had, well, we've had a lot of meetings with them, um, but we're working with the um, Historic Preservation Committee. 
Um, we're working a lot of planning and we're doing zoning changes and um, breaking up parcels. And um, we like to listen to what the community asks, you know, because it's going to be a property that serves the community going forward. So um, like with this one, we we heard retail. We want retail in the front. So we want this to look consistent. So we said, okay, let's figure out what that looks like. Um, for that specific property, they wanted apartments. Um, and so there's enough land to garner um, putting a new apartment building up. And so we're working on, we're building a new apartment building now, apparently. Um, but that's well on its way, and as well as a storage building. Um, and so that's another way that we've, they said, we've got, we need apartments. We need apartments really bad. How can you accommodate on this, this piece of land? That would be ideal. So we've, we've done that. Um, another property, we bought an event center that was closed down in New Ulm, Minnesota. Um, and um, or the owner wanted to leave. He had been trying to sell it for a long time. And we were, our intentions were to turn it into storage. But once we went in, it was beautiful. And we started talking with community. And they said, well, is there any way to leave the event center open? Um, you know, it's our largest one. And we did. So we ended up just taking the back warehouse that they didn't even use and turning it into climate-controlled storage. Um, so we, we like to work together it's a you know we need each other we're, we're hoping you'll all be storage customers someday too so <laughs> look can yeah. i just ask yeah. real quick so you do or don't have down, downtown it's going through the same process right okay, now okay so one is going through the same process yes. so this is this is new to your space yes okay, and we're we're very much um it's been a learning experience for sure working through these so um a lot of our other locations are um they're in shopping areas, um, so um, like high traffic area. So we don't really like to be in the industrial areas. Um, we, we like to be, I mean, our main customers are people who are in apartments, right? So we want to service the people that don't necessarily want a car. You know, that's how we're going nowadays. They want to be able to bike to it. They want to be able to walk over to it. Um, and just kind of the way that our offices are set up. So. We try to integrate with the community as much as possible. A lot of these storage buildings, you go in and it's just, you know, there's no one there, or you don't, you know, our office managers like to get to know our customers and our neighbors, and so um, we kind of have these programs where our office managers will go to the apartment complex and introduce themselves and make sure that, you know, um, if there's anything we can do to help or small businesses, but we like to get to know the community, not just we're just there kind of thing. Commissioner Markline, did, was your question answered? Yep. Okay. Yes, it um, was. I have a few questions. Do other commission members have questions? Commissioner Williams? So your normal hours are 5 a.m. to 10.30, and the your client gets a code, um, but that code doesn't work after 10.30? Correct. Okay. And just, yeah. So. Yeah. yeah. It doesn't matter if it's 10.31, their codes don't work. And, um, and then if a tenant tries to stay, like, let's say, someone's there at 10 and they're there, you know, until 1040, our managers pick that up and say, hey, look, you, you have to be out of the building by 1030. That's when we close. And so um, we serve five notice, five day notice to vacates um, quickly. If um, a tenant isn't the right choice for us and they decide to, you know, not abide by the rules, um, they're not, they're not the right customer for us. So they tend to be the customer that we have a lot more issues with after that. So yeah. Okay. Are there any other questions? I have a few. I'll, uh, okay. I'll put my glasses on. Um, well, first of all, um, uh, adaptive reuse seems to be your philosophy or your 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 family's philosophy. So congratulations on that. That's okay. that's pretty interesting. Um, I'm going to ask about. Uh, I think. Uh, well, uh, Mr. Kimball made mention of the fact of climate control, and that's a lacking place and space and I know that we're talking it seems a lot like apartment storage but the reality of it is if people want something storaged in a climate controlled facility there's nothing precluding them if they live in a home and they want to store their okay so that being said what are your average sizes of your storage units um, in your facility it's getting bigger every year so um, we've felt that as long as we go to a lot of trade shows and there's a lot of data out there, it used to be a 10 by 10 was your average size. Um, it's, it's closer. It's, I think it's above a 10 by 15 now, um, and closer to the 10 by 20 size. It's, they're getting larger for sure. Um, 
We're also seeing a shift in small businesses. Um, we have more small business customers now than we did three, four years ago before COVID. And I haven't pinpointed exactly what that means yet, but um, a lot of them are like, they don't necessarily want to invest in more um, uh, like warehousing space, like permanent space. There, a lot of them are more startups. And so it kind of helps them get off the ground without having to make that huge commitment that maybe they're not ready yet for. Um, so a lot of like, um, like clothing stores or like the candle shop or, you know, they're looking for storing their, their items there that come in their warehousing essentially. Um, so we've seen an uptick in that, which is, is kind of interesting. So if we can carry on that same thought. So if we're looking at potential warehousing, using your words, um, that would have to happen if it were to happen at all between the hours of 5 a.m. and 10.30 at night, correct? Yeah. And then Jose or someone else that you manage, are they the point person for the warehousing? No, so it's not your typical warehousing. So we don't accept any packages or deliveries. They have to be there to load it in themselves. So that's a very, a very, um, I shouldn't use warehousing, no. I should. <laughs> but that's a slippery slope. So actually, our insurance cha would change. The laws change around that. So we're very we're not a warehousing, and um, there are a lot of storage build, you know, right. mom pops that that don't understand that. But it does very much change your lease. <laughs> mm -hmm. So yes, correct. Okay. Um, well, then I had a question about deliveries. Yeah. Um, and and there is the um, loading dock in the back. And would it be fair to say that all deliveries, including those deliveries, if there were deliveries needed for the retail space, would also be using that loading dock? Yeah, I would, if they were, um, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so that would go in there. Um, uh, the other thing I noticed was help me understand where, you, you mentioned the, the ask about the truck, so we'll probably have that conversation amongst the commission, but help me understand where, um, let's say the apartment owner or the house owner has put stuff in there but they don't want it anymore. And wh where are your dumpsters and what is your policy? Because, because at the end of the day, depending upon where this goes, right, you know, high volume foot traffic, it's unique, everybody win-win, good, good community partner, yeah. all those types of things. But th there are going to be um, things that people don't want. Yeah. And I guess my question is, where does that go? Yeah. And what is your policy for removal? You mentioned you have outdoor cameras, so you potentially could identify someone, but just yeah, I, I think that's something that we I'd like to know more information about. Yeah, so we don't do any outside dumpsters, and for the reason of other people start to put things in there that are too large or they don't fit, and we accumulate stuff. Even if we we put a camera there, and most if they're t storage tenants, we know who they are. Um, the, there's face recognition software that we have, so we can identify them in the building or outside. So that's an easy one. If it's other people, um, then that's tougher. So. All of our, our garbage comes. We have keep it in a unit, um, and we have and we have pickup every week. So and most of it's just like our office stuff, right? Um, if there was a tenant that didn't want their stuff um, or just didn't come back to claim their stuff, there is auctions. So an auction process that we go through. Um, let's say that someone just left a bunch of stuff out in the parking lot or something like that. That's what we have our moving truck for, um, and we can bring things to the the dump where they're properly disposed of. So do you have at your other facilities where you're having these moving trucks or where people are leaving things, do you have a policy at your facility that states that if there are things left outside that they will be removed within 24 hours or removed within 48 hours? Yeah, so like if a customer does and it's their stuff, right? Well, either way, okay. there's stuff outside behind <laughs> Yeah. You know. So part of our, our in our lease, it talks about that they they need to remove things or they'll be charged with their card on file. Um, and there's a cleaning charge depending on the amount of things. So if it's not taken care of, we'll call the customer and say, hey, look, you know, this was left outside. Um, obviously, it's illegal dumping. You know, right. um, your lease talks about this. If you don't take care of it within 12 to 14 hours. It depends on what time of the day we're calling to. Um, then they have to uh, they'll have to pay the cleaning fee and we'll take care of it. 
within that 24 the reason i'm asking is yeah. in this instance you have another retail customer behind you yeah right yeah we um if you go to any of our other properties they're really clean um that's just how we run our business there's i've i have seen some really bad cases of this um and uh, it's it's poor management, and you know a lot of times they're your big REITs where you know there's no oversight with them. Um, but our properties are really clean. Um, if you have any questions about the operations too, I, if you look at our online reviews, I think that's a really telling scenario of how people operate their business and kind of consistently can show you a track record. I would encourage you to look at those. Um, and that's fine. I, I, I'm glad yeah. to know that you, you're aware of it and that yes. you have, if you will, a policy that addresses that very thing. Yeah, um, definitely. So I just wanted to make sure yeah. that that was the case. Thank you. Um, you're welcome. Thank you. Are there any other questions? Yes. Nicole, you heard some discussion earlier about some folks wanting whether or not you could put some windows on the west side. You also had the that nice cornice that you've added on the Milwaukee Street side and you brought it around the corner and I've heard some discussion about could that cornice possibly be extended further. Uh, what are your thoughts about that? Is that, that a prohibitively expensive or do you have, are you open yeah. to uh, maybe enhancing a little bit more? I wish it wasn't so expensive. Um, when We've never put cornice on any of our other buildings. I'm noticing it now everywhere because it does look really nice. It's really expensive. I want to say the cornice that is already proposed is like 60,000, some 68,000. Um, and so if you talk about going the long length of that building, which we originally looked at and priced at, it's really expensive. Um, so um, we did the kind of the, the main focal points of the building. Um, the other thing with windows on the lower level, so because that's a the structure of the building, you know, right now it doesn't have any windows on that corner. Um, you have to go and change the structural elements of the building, and that gets really spendy too, especially with an older building that needs some care. Um, it's no easy task to just add more windows. Um, so we tried to find a delicate balance of let's really do this building nice and figure out how to get it in with certain cost parameters as well. Okay. The Great existing question. building has... Uh... Look at that picture in the upper left. It has some type of brick. I don't know if it's individual bricks or brick panels on the corners, even the back corner, and I think across the facade on the front. When we look at your artist yeah. renderings, it makes it look like it's all brick. Was that an error on the part of the person who did the drawing? I mean, there's concrete block in there yeah. that's painted or stained. Uh, you show different colors, but it also, if you look at it, it looks like it's all brick on all four sides. That is that intended or is that an error in the uh, preparation of the? That's yeah. Name? That's just yeah, mar minor error. I would say. I think. Um, so our graphic designer um, isn't local for Janesville. They work on our other projects, and so I, I didn't honestly notice it until now, so I'm sure it was an overlook. It is, so you'll see it's, it's smaller brick on the corner, and then it turns in a block, um, which is what you're, you're discussing, yeah. And so it will be block, but it It'll will be, be block, re yes. stained. Yep, so we're going to have the entire building tuck pointed, because um, it needs it, um, and then repainted, um, so... Yeah, it'll follow the normal contour of the block or, or brick in that case. Okay. Can you show us on, on the drawing where you wanted to change that green space? Yeah. Um, so there's the... Yeah. All right, so there's the green space on the top of the screen. Mm -hmm. um, and then the one right below it. So um, the one right below it, which is right next to the building, um, we're, because there's not enough power to the building, we're having to work with Alliant Energy very closely on getting more power in. The power runs right along North High Street. Um, and so they're proposing that we put the power right where that green space is. There's also a chance that we may have to install a new freight lift um, at some point in the next year, um, we're working through that. 
Um, having it located near the power is where they, they ideally like it. Um, and since we're going through this whole exercise of actually, I mean, everything power-wise is being taken out of that building, everything will be new. Um, they wanna put the transformer pad somewhere near there. Um, and then we also wanted to put our freight lift. Um, so having the green space there kind of works against that, which I hadn't explained to um, the planning staff because we're literally working through it right now with the Alliant and trying to figure everything out. So ideally, if we could put the green space um, on the top one and then um, a night, another spot right next to it to the right. So it would see, be the same square footage, but it would just be right. That went, um, that way it would be out of the way of future development, oops, and it would be easier to just plan everything. Okay, so it'd be an equal amount of space, but it would be a, like two parking stalls instead of one yeah. on the far north end. And then where that mechanicals would be, would you do any kind of screening to that, like a fence? Or? Um, Brian mentioned that. I, I don't know what it's going to look like yet. So um, let I think if we, we just say we'll work with planning staff to figure that out as it comes on the site plan. Um, we're having the property resurveyed right now. Um, and so that'll kind of, they're looking at easements and things like that. And so we'll, um, I don't know the end, yeah. Okay, yeah. thank you. Yeah. Are there any other questions? Commissioner Mark Lane. Just wanted to make sure that there's review of the site plan that they dated here October 10th. You've referenced it a few times with your green space and that, but you're in agreement with the terms that they're asking the city? Yeah, the only exceptions we were asking is to move the green, that one chunk of green space um, over so that it would be two parking spots on the top side. And then also we would like to be able to have one moving truck in our parking lot parked overnight. Okay, thank you. I'm gonna follow up on what Commissioner Mark Klein asked about though, however, related to the parking. So um, have you given any thought or had conversations with staff for the ability to use that as lot parking? Honestly, we haven't had that conversation with anybody at this point. Um, that was, it was the first time I've heard about it tonight. Okay. Um, I just was curious. I don't know, Commissioner Mark Klein, if you It was just uh, to plant the seed. Yeah. Um, very community oriented. I applaud you for the efforts. What you're doing is, is above and beyond what I think most companies would be doing. And, um, but th there most likely will be a need in the evening hours for off street parking for some of these residents. and if you're able to do lease parking or some sort of arrangements with the neighbors in your area, I think they would appreciate it. Yeah, absolutely. We're looking forward to meeting a few more neighbors too. There was a couple at um, right across the street, the new apartment complex, you know. Well, once we get under construction is typically when we start meeting everyone and developing those networks. So, um, but we'll be in conversation, absolutely. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Are there any other questions? I see none right now. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Anyone else wishing to speak regarding the public hearing of rezoning of property located at 314 West Milwaukee Street from B5 to B6 and the conditional use permit to operate a warehouse? Hi, uh, Dan Cunningham, uh, Vice President of Forward Janesville. I live at 914 Sentinel Drive in Janesville. And as Dwayne mentioned, I just wanted to reiterate some of the points that were in the letter that were submitted by Angela Pakes, our President and CEO, earlier today. Uh, Midwest Indoor Storage and their representatives have actively engaged the city and the community about this project since its inception. We've heard that uh, story well told tonight. They've been very receptive to change requests and their project will improve a property that is badly in need of revitalization. Midwest Indoor Storage has a strong commitment to the communities which they are located, which is demonstrated through their dedication to rehabilitating vacant and distressed properties and through company ownership and professional on-site management and operation of each of their facilities. With dozens of five-star Google reviews, uh, we believe they will be an excellent addition to our growing downtown business community. So just wanted to reiterate that we support this project at uh, 314 West Milwaukee Street, and we look forward to welcoming Midwest Indoor Storage into the community. So thank you for your time. Thank you. Anyone else wishing to speak? Mr. Graff? <laughs> Anyone else wishing to speak? Last call. Anyone else wishing to speak regarding the rezoning of property at 314 West Milwaukee Street from B5 to B6 
Conditional use permit to operate a warehouse establishment at 314 West Milwaukee Street. Public hearing is closed. What are the wish of Commissioner Markley? I would move to forward the rezoning of property located at 314 West Milwaukee Street from B5 to B6 to the City Council with a favorable recommendation. Motion by Commissioner Markline. Is there a second? I'll second. <coughs> Excuse me. There's a, a second of the motion. Oh, I'm drinking some water. <coughs> So any further discussion, Commissioner Markley? I just want to probably sound like I was critical of it, but <clears throat> it's an important piece of property in our downtown area, and I just wanted to make sure that people's concerns and questions were, were brought up and answered, and your your answers seem to be spot on. Um, I, up on the plan, I couldn't tell why there wasn't a third retail. Your explanation made all the sense in the world um, for that. So um, just wanted to make sure that we were being consistent and uh, doing the right thing for our community, and I'm confident we are with the rezoning. Commissioner Weber? Yes, uh, I also support the, the rezoning. Um, one of the things I looked at is that, it, Dwayne mentioned it's on the edge of downtown, and if you look at the zoning map, the property immediately to the west of it is all B6 already. Mm -hmm as well as to the north. So it's not like a spot zoning or a spot rezoning. It is uh, adjacent or contingent or, or you know, consecutively next to a similarly zoned property. The other thing is you know, I also had, in a perfect world, it would have been the whole front side would have been all retail, but uh, I had the opportunity to go by and stare through the windows this afternoon and see the different elevations uh, within the building itself, and you could see how difficult that could be. Uh, you know, the first door to the east is, is set back from the corner because there the floor is too high to have a door come in. And, uh, and then as you go to the west, you can see where it's dropping down, and there's a false floor where they had a show window, I think, where they had furniture in the window before, but that had to be lifted up. So you could see that it just wasn't that compatible. And then the other question about, you know, should we be changing zoning to allow this uh, right downtown and where we were successful in not doing those sort of things at the Menard site and the Shopko site, those two sites have very good highway access, access to the highways, which is needed for big box type developments or is certainly very desirable. That's not the case down there. We don't have this kind of access in our downtown area. Uh, so it, it's not the same situation as those other two and that's why I think that, that I'm supportive of what's happening here, whereas I wouldn't, hadn't been on the other two. Thank you. With that, we have a motion by Commissioner Markline, second by Commissioner Weber regarding rezoning of property located at 314 West Milwaukee Street, Midwest Indoor Storage from B5 to B6. If there are no further questions, I'll ask that we have the voice vote at this time. Commissioner Bodger. Yes. Commissioner Williams. Yes. Commissioner Knox. Yes. Commissioner Weber. Yes. Commissioner Vosco. Yes. Commissioner Udell. Yes. And Commissioner Markline. Yes. The motion is unanimously approved. And that motion passes. Uh, this particular uh, motion now recommendation goes to the city council, which would be on, correct me if I'm wrong, November 14th? Correct. Okay, 2022. Commissioner Knox. Um, I'd like to also make a motion and move to find that the proposed development is compliant with the standards for conditional use approval prescribed by the Janesville Zoning Ordinance and approve a conditional use permit to operate a warehouse establishment 14 West Milwaukee Street subject to the conditions listed in the planning division memorandum dated October 17th, 2022. Okay, uh, motion by Commissioner Knox, second by Commissioner Udell. Commissioner Knox, you have the floor. Nothing further, just if we, we pass it, uh, all the best to you. Excuse me, we just want to clarify, is there a question on the motion? Well, I had a question um, and, and it's essentially a reminder to the commission, you brought up previously, you would come back and address the issue with uh, the potential for one truck to be parked outside by the owner. Is that something 
I was going to bring that up as potential amendment to the motion. Okay, I just didn't want you to forget. Oh, I've got that. And then also, just as long as you've asked that question, um, what about the utilities? Would that be something staff would be able to facilitate, or how would you like us to address that particular uh, um, and, and screening? Sure. I, I believe that under the conditional use provisions, if this were to be approved, that it would be considered a minor alteration to the plan that we have um, the authority in the code to work directly with the owner because it's still generally consistent with the plan. So I don't believe you can certainly specify that and then that uh, provides that uh, assured flexibility, but otherwise this would be uh, consistent with that minor alteration that we could work directly with them on under the code. Okay, so um, I, I was going to get clarification for the original motion. Commissioner Udell, are you fine with the original motion? So then I'll turn it back to Commissioner Knox and Commissioner Udell um, for potential revision to your motion. Um, I, I'm welcome to, or I, I'm open to making a revision to add I guess I'd like more for clarification on the conditional use permit for a vehicle. Is that would that truly be under? I, I'm asking. It's well, in there. It's defined in the in the letter that it's not it's prohibited. Yeah. So okay. so the, the the short answer to the question is right now it would not be a prohibited use. It is a prohibited use. In the condition. I'm sorry. I'm looking at the wrong one here. Um. So I I would be open to making an amendment to allow a single use I have a suggestion yeah I don't want to get into the CDL the CDL issues and, and straight truck versus yeah. so if if we modify condition um, number six it would read as follows at least a, a change to the first sentence outdoor storage and overnight truck parking are prohibited with the exception of one moving truck, which may be parked on site for use by the property owner. And then continue with the second sentence regarding parking of other operable licensed passenger vehicles. Number six on page one of 20, I think. On the very bottom. Yeah, yeah. I, I agree with that, Dwayne. Yeah, um, it's strange. It, it wouldn't be, but it wouldn't be. This is we're we're not. We're not determining. We're not determining. Parking. We're not determining the type of type of truck. Uh, we're not. When you say vehicle, or it'd be a, a sixteen. I heard a sixteen foot straight truck, basically not a semi. Um, would that be different? I, I just I just want to make sure when I when I agree to that that that's what we mean. So under the code, I, I believe, and Brian, you can. Correct me if I'm wrong. I, I think we we define what uh, the maximum size size of a truck is, and I want to say it's gross vehicle weight of 8,400 pounds or somewhere in that neighborhood. We're talking about a typical U-Haul straight yep. truck of whatever, 18 feet in length right. or so. Yep. Uh, then I'm I, not yes. an idling delivery truck. Not. And then that is perfectly yes. fine with me with that modification. Yes. Commissioner Udell. I'm completely agree with Mr. Knox. Okay, so um, just so we're all on the same page, um, Dwayne, would you reread the motion, please? Uh, sure. So the the motion was that. Let me go back to the motion. On the proposed development. Um, the commission finds the proposed development is compliant with the standards for conditional use approval as prescribed by the Janesville zoning ordinance and approve a conditional use permit to operate a warehouse establishment at 314 West Milwaukee Street subject to the conditions listed in the planning division memorandum dated October 17, 2022 with the following modification to condition number six which reads outdoor storage and overnight truck parking are, pro are uh, prohibited with the exception of one moving truck which may be parked on site for use by the property owner the parking of other operable licensed passenger vehicles may occur within on-site parking stalls marked for that purpose. And, and uh, that was the only change. Okay, thank you. So that is the motion again by Commissioner Knox, second by Commissioner Udell. Are there any other further discussions? Commissioner Williams. Just to clarify, um, this type of business does not require a dumpster area? 
this year? I don't believe the code requires a dumpster. If you're going to provide one, you need to satisfy the screening requirements and placement, and, but um, there's no requirement to provide a dumpster in the code. I just wanted to make sure. And I wanted to ask this earlier, but I'll ask it now because it's been asked to me. Um, why uh, this is not required by code to be sprinkled, is a sprinkler system? The answer is we don't know yet, the, the, um, but the requirement is entirely dependent upon uh, the state or Wisconsin building code requirements for sprinkling. Um, there's no interpretation that needs to be made or is available to be made. So as their designer prepares the building construction plans and the state reviews those, or in this case, the state's third party consultant plan reviewer reviews those, um, our local building code is uh, adopted under the state code, so if it's required, they need to install sprinkling. If it meets the uh, exemption, they would not. But that is nothing that the plan commission would. No, it is not within this your scope of this review. Thank you. Nothing Any further? other further questions? Okay, there is a motion and a second. Voice vote, please. Commissioner Bodisher. Yes. Commissioner Williams? Yes. Commissioner Knox? Yes. Commissioner Weber? Yes. Commissioner Bosco? Yes. Commissioner Udell? Yes. And Commissioner Markline? Yes. Unanimously uh, carries. Excellent. Now this part of the motion stays within the purview of the Plan Commission, so that will not be going to City Council. Okay. Good luck on the 14th of November. For some and reason, good luck with your project. They couldn't get the zone. Thank you. Could they still get a conditional use permit? No, that not eligible. Okay, we're moving on. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Item number six, new business. There's no new business this evening to report, but we are going to listen to item number seven, the director's report. Uh, thank you, not uh, much to add this evening. We will have a meeting um, the first Monday of November, November 7th, we have, uh, I, I think, not a lot on the agenda, but several items on the agenda. I believe they're all under new business, so. Um, but we, I, I can tell you we will have a meeting in the 7th. And other than that, I don't think I have any other updates at this point. Um, the, did, I was listening, really I was. But um, n November, the, the Monday of Thanksgiving week? Oh yes, good point. So uh, we have, as, as you know, two uh, meetings a month. The second meeting, which I believe is the third week of November, falls on the 21st, and that is the week of the Thanksgiving holiday. And generally speaking, if there are uh, uh, public hearing items that are set for public hearing the meeting prior, or in other words, on the 7th, we would generally look to conduct those public hearings uh, on a non-holiday plan commission week, which would then push us to November, I'm sorry, December 5th. So we will have no public hearings on the week of them. I don't think that's appropriate to have public hearings during a holiday week. And we may see, depending upon the agenda, actually if we're going to have a meeting on that 21st as well, wouldn't you think? Or we that would... is, cr I don't know that yeah. the answer to that yet. So we, but... will, we will try to figure out a way, even if we have to, like, public notice things to meet um, prior to that. Yep. Okay. Yes. That's what I wanted to make sure. Okay. Anything else, Dwayne? Otherwise, we'll move to number eight. Nope. Okay, plan commission announcements. Commissioner Markline? As we're doing calendar, are we anticipating any comprehensive plan meetings yet this year? Yet this year, no. yes. Um, <laughs> when exactly, I, I, I don't know. I know we'll be coming before the, uh, the steering committee to at least have an initial discussion on our, our thoughts uh, our, and our ideas and, and looking for your direction on the land use section, because that will, I'm guessing, take two to three meetings just to work through that discussion, which of course uh, will also include looking at uh, making some uh, modifications to the land use, future land use designations on the comprehensive plan, future land use map. Um, I, if I had to guess, I would say that'll probably be early December at this point. Yeah, but we will have a meeting before the end of the year. I'm just going to say there's only really three, 
three Mondays available. So right. the December one works good. Yeah. The Thanksgiving one might be problematic if we're opening it to the public. Right. right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> we're officially adjourned. Thank you.